<clears throat> Before we discuss what's to come in 2012, um, there's a lot from 2011 still to cover, uh, from Emmy nomination to the Degrassi mobile game to 43 new episodes of Degrassi airing, and on top of all that, of course, the new series, The LA Complex. So what was 2011 like for you? Uh, it was crazy, crazy good. You know, producing all that Degrassi, working on the L.A. Complex, even coming up with the name L.A. Complex <laughs> at the time. Whenever you're working on a new series, there's so many things you're doing for the first time, like coming up with the, the name, which, of course, was, ended up being the L.A. Complex. Mm -hmm. But is there going to be a theme song? Is there not going to be a theme song? Uh, what kind of shooting style are you going to use? Um, we've ended up using a shooting style that is similar to Degrassi in the sense that it's it's video. We're using the Epic camera on the LA Complex. We use the RED camera on Degrassi. They're very, very similar. But we're shooting in a very different way. It's a handheld feel for the LA Complex. Again, it's different from Degrassi. So coming up with all of those templates takes hours and hours and hours and, you know, battling back and forth. So even though we produced six hours of the L.A. Complex, which sounds like not too much compared to 43 Degrassi, there was an awful lot of work involved in those first six. Mm -hmm. So between the two series, and then you know, we, we were very, very lucky this year to get the number of awards that we did. Uh, so that's always uh, a real joy. And uh, that was certainly some of the most fun times of the year was uh, being able not just so much for Linda and me, but for the for the cast and the crew to uh, be rewarded for their work was really, uh, really very gratifying. Mm -hmm. So when you actually got the Emmy nomination, what were like, what were you doing? Who told you? I got word of the uh, the Emmy nomination as I was driving up one of the uh, the highways, the Midtown Highways in Toronto called the Don Valley Parkway. You know, as I got in the car, I got this email saying, oh, we've got an Emmy nomination. So as I, I was thrilled and as I was driving up towards the studio, I called in and I said, that's fantastic. You know, um, an international Emmy nomination is, is always wonderful. And they said, no, 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 you don't understand. It's not an international Emmy. It's a primetime Emmy. And I went, oh, my mm -hmm. God, it's wonderful. And so I hung up and then... Um, uh, a few minutes later, I called in again and I said, yes, a daytime Emmy nomination for cable and everything. That's really <laughs> wonderful. We've never had that before. And they said, no, 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 you don't understand. It's a prime Emmy <laughs> nomination. So I really just didn't uh, didn't quite believe it until I got to the office and saw the nominees and saw how it was unfolding. So that that was a thrill. And then when we last talked uh, last year, the Degrassi mobile game was just getting started. And now, as we know, it's off to a huge success. And with the fifth and sixth episodes supposed to be coming soon, is there any progress on those? Well, yes, I think by the time this interview runs, I hope we'll be able to say uh, that, uh, that episodes five and six are out. Um, they're really good. The game just keeps getting better and better. The first six really are a package. They are, uh, we refer to it internally, and maybe we'll start referring to it more externally as well as season one. So because uh, five and six, there's just been these weird little technical difficulties that have prevented uh, getting it out until now. They were supposed to be out well before uh, Christmas time. But anyway, we'll get them out. I, I hope that people will really, really like them. And I think people who already have the game will be thrilled by them. And hopefully it'll entice a lot of uh, uh, new fans to the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've also been working uh, very hard on what we'll call Season 2, which likely won't be starting uh, until closer to when we come to air with Season 12 on television in, in the summertime. But season two is really going to be a generation different. Um, I, I won't say too much about it now. What I will say, though, is it will expand uh, the use of... Right now, you accumulate Degrassi points. There's going to be lots more ways to accumulate Degrassi points. And there's going to be lots more things you can do with your Degrassi points. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll leave it at that. But the, the, the basic storytelling will be uh, very similar and episodic. But the game is just going to get very much bigger. Okay. 
Uh, now, this fall marked the first time in uh, Degrassi, the Next Generation uh, history, that there was no uh, fall season, due at least uh, partially to the creation of the L.A. Complex, which will start its six-episode run on Tuesday. Now, a lot of fans were, I think, initially upset over this, but to me, I think it shows the confidence that you know everyone has in this new series – so what was the decision like to delay production on a show like Degrassi to work on an entirely new show? And there, there's two reasons for um, not having as much Degrassi in the fall. I mean, we had the, the one-hour special. One was, you're right, we needed to make room for producing um, the L.A. complex. But we could have uh, shifted production around. How we ended up producing, we shot some Degrassi, then we shot the L.A. complex, and then we came back to Degrassi. Hopefully next season we'll be producing even more of the L.A. Complex. And uh, so we'll just have to be shooting the L.A. Complex at the same time as we're shooting Degrassi, uh, at least partially. So the, the production side of, side of it did play a factor. But the other key factor is what the broadcasters wanted, who really wondered, uh, with so much Degrassi in the summertime, um, did it make sense to bring it back, you know, very quickly in the fall? Maybe instead of having uh, six or seven weeks of the telenovela, maybe we should have just a tiny bit less, uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe five weeks or six weeks. And that would allow uh, a number of episodes to come on in the fall. Uh, traditionally, Teen Nick had had seven or eight episodes in the fall. Right. And um, I kind of like that still. So uh, we'll have to see how it rolls out. But it won't be because of uh, the production uh, facilities at Epitome. We're, we're able to produce both the L.A. Complex and Degrassi at the same time. It worked in the sense of building up anticipation for uh, the new episodes coming up. But um, as I say, I'd, I'd be much happier if we had at least a few more episodes in the fall. Yeah. Now, back to uh, the L.A. Complex. Um, for those who might not know exactly what it is... Um, it says the description is a 20-somethings living in the same apartment complex in L.A. trying to make it as various entertainment-related professions with relationships beginning and ending and the need to succeed is tested as all characters are pushed to their breaking points. What more can you uh, use to describe the show? Well, you know, when I hear it described like that, it sounds very <laughs> clinical as though it's some kind of medical condition. I, I think the L.A. complex is an incredible show. I, I think it's one of the best shows ever produced. I, you know, this is the producer talking. Uh, you can expect me to be excited. I just cannot wait for people to watch the show. Uh, yes, it's about young people, not as young as Degrassi. So the, these uh, people are not in high school anymore. They graduated, they're living in LA, and they're trying to pursue their dreams. And in the meantime, you know, they're having to survive. So how do they pay the rent while they're uh, going to auditions and callbacks? Uh, there's a lot of drama. There's a large dose of humor. There's some really hysterically funny moments in it, if I may say so myself. Mm -hmm. And there's some very, very dark moments in it as well. So it really is, I hope that people will be drawn in and just uh, be gasping as they, you know, engage with the characters more and more and uh, really want to find out what, you know, how it's all going to turn out for them. Now, from reading a lot of the early press and stuff, a lot of people, I think, were surprised in the direction it went because I sort of expected it to be more like Degrassi. I mean, tackling the issues, but it seems like this show is pushing more boundaries and more of an adult show. So what was the range like? Because you want to keep, you know, some of the Degrassi fans to come in, but you also want to appeal to some older, you know, some new fans as well. Well, and remember that we've got a lot of Degrassi fans uh, who are... <laughs> older now. I mean, particularly the fans who are with us in the early stages of the next generations. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we didn't want to just recreate, do, do a new Degrassi. We're already doing Degrassi and we love doing Degrassi. And I think, um, you know, as the fans see the last half of this season and as we get into season 12, I, I think it's just getting better and better. And, um, you know, we'll, we get into issues, but we get into them from uh, a young person's perspective, someone who actually is in high school. Mm -hmm. In the L.A. complex, um, you know, the par there's no parents around. There are these young people who are doing a lot of things for the first time, and, and they're making a lot of mistakes. 
uh, as they do it. At the same time, they are just driving forward uh, with complete 100% passion, uh, trying to push forward to, to follow their dreams. And um, we get into a lot of issues. We get into some things that we really couldn't get into with Degrassi. And I won't say more than that, uh, except to say, I think by the end of episode two, I think uh, there's there's quite a twist that uh, what people say, oh, that's never been done on television. It wasn't a decision to be like or not like Degrassi so much as we were intrigued by the possibility of telling the story of young people, which is difficult to tell. You'll recall in Degrassi that uh, around season seven, we tried to follow some of our most loved characters, including Manny, mm-hmm. um, into uh, the post high school environment. And what we discovered was, yes, we love seeing those characters again, you know, the Ellie's and the, and the Craig's. And, um, but they, it didn't have the same impact as it did telling the stories in the high school environment where there's, there's this structure. People have to get into school. They have to go to classes. And if they don't, there's, uh, there's consequences. When you're 20-something, there aren't those same consequences. But there's many more, almost more life and death consequences. Mm -hmm. So um, rather than pushing the boundaries of Degrassi and trying to tell those stories within the confines of a high school show, we've been able to tell the stories of young people who are doing some pretty incredible things in their their own way, are really trying to find themselves and are pushing their own limits and in many cases going over their limits uh, in an attempt to both achieve career success, but also in the end to find out who they really are. Mm-hmm. Now, there are some familiar faces, of course, uh, Cassie Steele from Negrassi and Chris Turner from Instant Star, among some other people from other popular shows that are not related to Degrassi. Uh, what was the casting process like, and how did the people like Chris Turner and Cassie Steele get back involved into the family? It's, uh, there was a very large casting process. We did many auditions in Toronto, also in Vancouver and in Los Angeles, as well as having uh, self-tapes, meaning people who, uh, there was you know, some people in London, England, who sent in uh, tapes for, uh, for consideration. So it was, it was a long uh, casting process. In terms of Cassie, um, originally when we were, in the early, early stages, this was many years ago when we were first thinking about the L.A. complex or the show that has turned into the L.A. complex. We started to think of it as a spinoff of Degrassi Goes Hollywood. After uh, the first little while of development, we realized for the reasons that we were just talking about that we did not want it to be a spinoff. We didn't want to be following the Degrassi characters into uh, into a new adventure. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it became the, uh, the, what we originally thought of as being the Manny character became the Abby character. And it's similar. I think fans will, will see some similarities, but really because it's Cassie, uh-huh. really it is a different character. So um, the odd thing was that Cassie had to uh, audition along with many hundreds of other people for the Abby role. And I remember I ran into her. Um, we've now got a second building because in order to uh, to do the L.A. complex, in addition to our 100,000 square foot building, we had to rent a 40,000 square foot building wow. that, uh, that was nearby us. And so we were doing the uh, uh, the casting for it. And I went over to, because I wanted to see Cassie's audition. And I got there a little bit late and she was just coming out of the audition. And she was the most nervous I've ever seen anyone. She was just, or she was talking a mile a minute, and I just, I gave her a hug and said, "I'm sure you'll, you've done great." Beth. She said, "Please, please, let me know. Let me know. Like, I can't take it." And so, um, about a day or so later, uh, I I tweeted um, to Cassie just something which I thought was obscure enough. Uh, I pre- exactly what I tweeted, but it was, you know, things are looking good or something like that. Uh-huh. And, uh, and she tweeted back, if you're saying what I think you're saying, if the code that I think you're using is the, is the right code, then I'm very happy. So the, anyway, that was the Cassie process. With Chris, um, we were hoping that Chris would be one of the main characters and we'd, uh, we'd auditioned him for that. But at the same time, he was um, becoming, he was auditioning and actually had won the part 
for a show called Saving Hope that he's in and uh, has actually been doing very well. And so we weren't able to cast him as one of the main characters. You'll find that he's, he's an integral part of the series, but he's not one of the, the, the top six or seven. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he lives at the Lux, 